Welcome back to Big How the Nerd and today's episode of The London Journeyman as we are back in time days, like one day after we beat Wildstone, uh, because of one little piece of information or news item that's come through, Leighton Orient have offered us a job. What well, interview, not the actual job themselves. Leighton Orient, the job we applied for, they're sitting 16th in the Vanarama National League. Yeah, you know, just about three points above uh, relegation, but one league above where we are, and we are suffering. Um, so we're back to attend the interview because we must see the interview through together. We're in this together. Um, in terms of games, we've got St. Albans and Leverhead coming up. We won't play the games. We will still hold on uh, and try and get through to the Whitehawk game and Hampton Richmond as the f as the episode's games. But uh, I will play the other games. And if news items come up, I don't know how quickly they come back to you. Are they going to do the interview now and then like offer me the job tomorrow? Is it a week? Is it two weeks? Who knows? Uh, but we will go through, see what happens, see through this job application, and then either play Whitehawk and Hampton and Richmond or change jobs. So let's get into the interview, shall we? Attend. I didn't put my suit on. I'm not dressed for this. Hello, Johnny Clayton, the director of uh, Leighton Orient. Hello, Big. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, I invite you along today to be put forward the vision for the club and allow you to suggest any alterations you consider. Okay, I'm glad you give me the chance. Let's get down to business. You have very little management experience. That obviously concerns me a little. Can you explain why that is? I'm going to go for the little, the limited time in management and hope they don't pick up the fact that we're underachieving this year. Go. Some uh, some people might be inclined to say you're taking some of a risk by leaving. Okay, you didn't, you didn't comment on that. That's good. Uh, leaving what is considered to be a safe job and looking to make a jump to an altogether bigger challenge. What's the thought process behind your decision? I'm a baller. It's all a matter of perception, really. And none of that should matter to either of us. I'm only concerned with being the best manager I can be. Let's do it. I'm going to be the best I can be. I'm the best around. Uh, why have you been largely unable to meet expectations across the board in your current job? Ah, oh, bollocks. Um, things aren't that bad. You're currently under four, underperforming at Dulwich Hamlet. Is it a case if you're looking to just jump before being pushed? I genuinely want to work for Leighton Orient. That's true. I fancy a Leighton Orient save. Currently we're looking for a candidate capable of performing to competition expectations. Something our last manager did not do. Are you confident? Yes. Uh, I have not got a good record. I'm confident of cheating every time except for me if I get the job. I'm looking to hire a manager comfortable working with limited resources. I mean, I had like no money last job. Yes, I know I'll be able to look after the club's finances if given the job. We're really looking for someone capable of taking this team to the next level. Yes, can you make that reality? I mean, you just told me you're going to have give me no money and then ask me to take you to the next level. Really? I think we've got enough about me as manager to get done. Yeah, that's good enough. Uh, this is their, okay. How would you feel about working under current director of football, Martin Lang? More than happy to work with director of football. Uh, we end up, because I can just tell him what to do. Uh, also, we got no money, so what's he going to do? Uh, we understand the importance of having the right backroom team in place uh, when a manager moves to a new club. So, are you willing to, uh, so we're willing to allow you to request any changes you would like to make, as well as your opportunity to request any staff members you want to bring with you from your current club. What sort of budget would you be looking to make these changes? Uh, I'd require a small budget to allow me to make some modifications before taking charge. Yeah. I want to have a look at them at least, don't I? And, I? and if I can bring staff members with me, I do want to. But, I mean, our first lot of staff members weren't the best, necessarily. Uh, in favour of developing players using the club's youth system. Well, I hope they've got a good one. Uh, opposed to signing high-profile players. That's okay, you've got no money. Signing young players for the first team. Do you want to develop players, but you don't want to sign them? Do you want to sign them as young with... I suppose we can turn it into a selling club. Just pick up all the high-potential youngsters that are on the freebie list. Load them up in the youth team on very small contracts. And then develop them if we can or sell them for a bit of money. I'm happy with that, Leighton Orient. I can do that. Uh, I would like to... No, I don't want to... I don't want to put any of these in. Uh, no. I have no... I have no philosophies. I have no philosophies. I mean, later on, when we're a bit more settled as a manager, we've got a bit more experience, something years of experience, uh, then maybe we'll kick some philosophies in. We'll, we'll start to build our own philosophies as a manager. I should be highly expected when club to finish mid-table. Is that fair? Yeah. Um, I give them a job I would able to reach mid-table finish. No, let's go mid-table. Let's not over-push it. Transfer budget is fine. Uh, I'm happy to work with a slightly smaller transfer budget. Yeah, why not? It's, I mean, it's like 2.6k. That's good. Wage budget, 33 grand per week. That is a lot compared to... Uh, oh, the wage bill is too much. 
Uh, I'll be happy to work with the proposed wage budget. Do you have anything other to request? No. Okay, that is the interview done. Herb set for Leighton Orient after job interview. Oh, we've shown a preference for young players. That's what they like. Uh, the odds with the odds uh, now three to one. Uh, Herb is considered amongst the leading candidates to be hired. Come on, come on, the Herb. Are you in to speak about your recent interview? Uh, I'm after a fresh start. Nope. I'm ready to take the next step of my career and have been acting accordingly. I'm just not going to talk about it. I feel like it's safe to just not talk about it. I don't want them. I don't think Leighton Orient will negatively impact us for that. Um, but we will see what happens. So we will leave it there. I will cut back when we have any more news stories on it. Or it will be back for the Whitehawk game. So we've got quite a wait. Okay. So it has happened. Leighton Orient approach Big Herb the Nerd to take the role. Come on. We're making our first move. Our first jump in this save. In this journeyman save. I will keep the Dulwich Hamlet. Uh, save, like I said, I'll take it over to Twitch at some point and carry on, see if we can drag them out. Look, to be honest, we were looking like we were going to get fired. Um, performances, well, that's a great. So we played one game, we played one St. Albans game, we drew one all. Again, just couldn't get the goals, couldn't get just anything working. Um, I should have gone for a higher compensation budget on the, the managers. I've, I've brought over one of my coaches with me. Uh, I wish I could have brought over my, I could have bought two of my coaches, they're very good. I wanted to bring over my uh, data analyst my physio a lot of my, the players i've got in are very oh sorry coaching stuff i've got in are very good actually uh so i wish i'd had a bigger budget i only had 10k which was not enough i needed about 50 uh to bring in all the players i wanted but we're bringing one coach with us the rest of the guys will stay behind um and this is the wage we've been offered so league expectation mid table transfer budget 2k wage budget 34 no philosophies no requests easy peasy and then we are getting a 50 pound a week that's not bad though pay increase uh, but more importantly a two-year contract so we're they're kind of keep us on till the end of 2021 so the end of this not this season next season so it gives us a bit of time will be too expensive to fire so let's finalize this deal and finish this episode with a look at Leighton Orient squad boom and there we go the screen has changed Herb takes charge at Leighton Orient 16th in the Vanarama National League we've jumped one league <laughs> Come on. That means all the damn bloody thumbnails are going to have to change. All the colours are going to have to change. The pink is going. In comes the red. We are 16th in the league. 19 games played, 5 wins, 6 draws, 8 losses. There's going to be a lot to look at. We'll go through as much of it as we can right now. We've got some time. Um, obviously, Torquay, uh, oh, I hate them because they knocked us away from it being us and Dulwich Hamlet in here. In terms of other teams that we can take over in this league, Damnum, uh, Dagnum and Redbridge, Sutton, uh, all part of our challenge. And that is it, I think. So there we go. I think a good jump, a safe jump. Near, like four points off the bottom. Still can push forward. Decent amount of season gone by. Team shouldn't be too far gone. Uh, we haven't got a lot of space to move people around, but we can bring in some uh, some freebies. And God knows there are a lot of freebies about. So let's have a look then at some of uh, the stats around Leighton Orient. So then we've just had our initial meeting. We've met Ross Embleton who is our assistant manager. He was slightly better than the assistant manager than we had before, so we keep him. We'll make we'll build a relationship with Ross. So let's have a look then. What have we got? Players, players currently unhappy is only one, James Alaba, or Alibi. Uh, he's in the seconds at the moment. He's a target man. He doesn't look very good. That's okay. Only one. That's good. I worried when I saw that item. Uh, social feed. Uh, no, we're going to keep these in. Don't tell us to unfollow. We have got all the ones we want to follow on here. All of them. Leighton Orient captain will keep... Oh, we've got Josh Colson is our captain. He's a defender. Looks good. Uh, yeah, let's, let's not muck any. Let's not muck around with anything. Leighton Orient in the background. We've won the league. Uh, Sky Bet League won once. English Third Division South once. Uh, best spell during the 1970s. OK. Youth Facilities. Old Chilliwins Club. Um, Chick Wellens. That's a weird thing. Training facilities are okay as well. Adequate on both. Adequate junior coaching. Average youth recruitment, which is interesting because they want to develop players through the, the youth team. So that's odd. Uh, stadium is Brisbane Road. We'll have to remember that. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they're enjoying a 49 spell without winning anything. Now is the time. Affectionately called the O's. Come on, the O's. Let's have a look at the strengths and weaknesses then. We'll actually go through this and look at that. Lots of strengths in more detail. In a second, we'll look at the team report. It's always how I start with building a tactic. And we will have to build a tactic. Um, 
players in last year contract. Oh, we got some good players in the last year contract here. Makai Bon. Striker, 24 years old. Very good. Pressing forward on defend is his favoured role. Josh Colson in there as well, our defender. We may have to look at that. We are, we've are we got a lot of players that have got less than, or due to expire in 12 months. I'd like to get some of these signed up. They look fairly good. I'm liking the amount of pluses we've got here as well. And then some real high potential players as well. Uh, so yes, we'll have to, we might just trigger some extensions on some of these guys. And then a welcome from the Chief Scout as well. So let's have a little look around the team. Let's let's look at our, where is our staff? Let's have a look at our staff. We've got four, co uh, four staff slots. We're okay with our averages. Did we actually bring in our man? Colin Cameron, he is. He come across straight away. Coach in there, Colin Cameron, he's come with us. He's the one we brought forward from Leighton Orient. I might actually go in there and try and steal some more and just spend some more uh, budget. But we only have assistant manager, goalkeeping coach, and Colin Cameron. It seems pretty crazy. Uh, we'll we'll try and use whatever budget we have to bring in more coaches because that's not enough. But Colin Cameron, decent across the board. 12 attacking, 11 defending, and 13 fitness. He does, he does a good job across the board. Uh, myself, because look at that. I'm starting to come a little bit useful at defending. I've now got my national A license. First thing I'm going to do, start coaching course. Uh, yep, we want a continental C license, please. I think it'd be beneficial. We agree. Yay. So Dulwich got us our national A. We're going to go into the continental license now, thanks to Leighton Orient. Um, what have we got in terms of, we've got two, a director of football we've got and a chief scout. Do we really need a director of football? Martin Ling. I'm not so sure we do, but okay. We might be able to use him for looking at some of the youngsters. Um, and then if we do get a decent, uh, a decent youth team in there. I feel like Leighton Orient is a team we can build with, but I don't want to get too settled. I want them to be good. I want to leave a team always in a better position. If that means putting time into the teams and the backroom staff, we'll do it. But we need to always bear in mind that you know we might run away at some point as well. We've got no data analysts or scouts or anything. I'm going to have to poach my guys. They were really good. Uh, medical staff are okay as well. There's a lot of them though. Sports scientists, a physio, a chief doctor, and a uh, head physio. So all good there. So yes, yeah, the team looks okay, but we will put some more effort in. We'll have a look then. Uh, let's have a look at the the scouting budget then. So we are we are 1.6k over our and we've used all. No, no, so let's whack it all into wage budget. Oh yeah, bugger all. 1.6. I should have taken that uh, transfer budget <laughs> just to prop up the wage budget. We need to get rid of players before we buy them. That's not going to be so good. Uh, what are we doing in terms of packages? Right, so in terms of our packages, we've got the Vanarama National Package, and we've got, oh my god, we've just got literally got the shitest. We've got the lowest of the low. We've got 21k on our budget. Yeah, we can't really go and spend too much. I'd like to app the senior one, or at least the, the scouting one. That's going to be tough. Tough is going to be finances. We don't have a lot. We've got 20 grand in the bank. Okay, finances are going to be a big problem for us. Uh, we have to jettison some squad members fairly quickly. We've got a quite a big squad. We get the under 23s and under 18s. And yeah, we've got a big, that's a big squad. We have got to get rid of some players here. Um, best player, Juanma. Uh, Josh Korma. I've looked at Josh Korma before. I think we might have looked at him and then maybe not signed him. So we've got some decent ability in here. That's good. Uh, enough almost for a first team. Then the guys that aren't so good that come next have got good potential. So that's one good thing. The potential in a team is amazing. We'll concentrate on those high potential players. Just get rid of the ones that aren't in there because we can get that contract budget down then. So if we have a look at some of the strengths and weaknesses then. Strengths, we've got good amount of youth prospects, which is good. And um, that's the top, top one in there. So we should be playing young players in the first team, although they don't like it. I think we're going to have to. We're going to have to bulk out the team of youth players just to get the wage budget down. Uh, anticipation is good. Crossing is good. So we can play wide. Marking is good. Uh, formations, okay. Uh, we've impressed against the 4-4-2. We've put, okay, 4-1-4-1 four, one, four, one seems to be what they play. Uh, we've got good depth in attack. That's good. We can go for two, maybe three strikers. Uh, good depth in uh, left wing. We are quick. It's off the mark. We score goals quickest. Uh, average attendance ranks us third in the league. That's good. That means we've got potential to be a big club. If we have big attendance, we've got a potential to go far. Because we can get money from that. Uh, good goalkeeper depth. That's rare. Alex Palmer is a very good goalie. Command of the air is good. Defense. Okay, we've got good. Juanma is a left back. Okay, good left back. Uh, Colson is a good centre back. First touch is good, technique is good, stamina is good, dribbling is good, finishing good, long shots, passing, 
aerial re okay that's good man i mean we shouldn't have any issues playing any formation here we've got strong leaders as well we're strong on the ball okay we're only so we've ranked seventh in goals conceded like, we're just not scoring then clearly if we're not doing so well our, everything seems to be working well apart from goals going in we're not letting them in we're just not scoring them so let's have a look then shot accuracy there we go 20 28 percent shot accuracy so the strikers we've got can't hit the target um yeah, 4 one, four one doesn't look good. I don't like a 4 one, four one. It's too defensive. Transfer budget of nothing. Obviously, wage budget's bad. We know we can't bring players in, but I think we've got enough here, especially if we uh, favour youth. Not a great deal of depth. Top goal scorer of Jaden Phillips, only four. It ranks him 28th in the competition. So we just need to get some goals into this team. That's it. Lack of quality depth for left back. Heading's not great. Throwing reflexes. So all is looking good. Your goalies, it's saying that we've maybe not got the best agility and stuff, but we've got good depth. If we look at the little squad depth screen, we're looking more de in more uh, detail. It looks like wide players we're struggling. We've got good uh, through the middle. We've got DMs, we've got midfielders, we've got wide men, and we've got strikers. I f I'm feeling a cheeky little 4-1-2-2-1. Uh, the West Ham formation coming on here. So let's have a look at the squad depth. Let's have a look at... Uh, so I think they're playing, they're playing a flat 4-4-2. It usually throws you in with what they've been playing. All positions, current ability. All... Uh, let's put it on to... Two. Yeah. Get all the squads in there. So we've got a lot of strikers. Okay, we've got Bond and Phillips as our top two strikers. An advanced forward attack. And this guy was more defensive. But pressing forward, defend. That's good. We've got two players that can work together. One's more attacking, one's not. Um, we've got then Smith who can drop in behind. He's an inside forward on attack rather than a... Oh, he's actually our best right winger. So that's not good. Kroma, who's our best left winger. And Alaba. Okay, so two striker formation is probably what we can get away with. Um, four, one, two, two, one. We might go for one. We'll see how that see how it goes out. Maybe a four, four, two might be better. We'll see. We will see. Um, if we look at uh, wingers, we got Chroma as our best forward. He's inside forward on the left. Uh, Brophy as uh, another winger on the left. He's not bad. Ryan Dow as well. He can play both sides. Defensive winger support. That's good to see. Smith. Matty Smith on the right-hand side, 22-year-old Scotsman. Got good finishing as well. Another inside forward. So we could go for one striker. It'd be interesting because we've got 18-year-old Jaden Phillips and Bon. We'll have to work out between them who's going to be best. But with two inside forwards, that will give us enough attacking threat. We can push wide the wingers out, uh, wing backs out wide and have a DM, which means there's a bit more support. I'm liking this. Liking this indeed. Um, in the middle, we've got Gorman. Uh, ball winning midfielder, perfect. Uh, Phillips, 18-year-old uh, central midfielder on attack. So we could probably train him as a Mitzale. He looks very basic, though. Uh, and Broman as well. Oh, that's no, not Broman. Byram. Joel Byram, 33-year-old deep line playmaker. Good defensive roles for this midfield. Um, and then they're not the same as the guys that can play in defense, which is good. Yalem Bayo, ball winning midfielder defend, can sit in here. We're not going to get Regista. We're not going to be lucky enough to get Regista down at this level. But we have a ball winning midfielder in defend. Comes in and does the work here. Or a DLP. We'll see how they are at DLP. He looks pretty good, this bio. Someone can spray the balls out. We need maybe another midfielder in the middle. And then we've got Coulson and Ekpita. Marvin, we're going to call him because that surname is too difficult for me to say. Look, don't look too bad. Dan Happy. Got some youngsters in there as well. A lot of 18-year-olds popping up. Juanma is our best defender on the left. Look at him. He's a fullback defender, but look at that crossing and dribbling. He can easily get forward and put some balls forward. And then Sam Ling on the right-hand side. Right only third. Again, not too bad. Miles Judd, not bad behind him. He's definitely a defence, isn't he? He's got good mentals, but whoa, that crossing, not so good. Okay, I'm happy with his team. And then Palmer at the back. Fairly strong goalie, 23-year-old. He's got a lot of life in him then. Uh, handling up at 13. Decent stats for the leagues we're in. Six foot three as well. Banging, right. Let's have a look at potential then. Let's have a look at potential. Kramer Phillips, we know about. I say Jaden Phillips could be the best. Bond's up there as well. Hammond. Lawrence Hammond. Oh, he's not bad, is he? Poacher attack could easily push up into the first team. Uh, Matty Smith up there. That's good to see. Kroma. So they, Matty Smith and Kroma will stay out there. Uh, that's Jaden Phillips. So Phillips will have to fight. Maybe we'll give him a bit more of a try than Bond. We need whoever scores essentially can stay in. With two inside forwards as well. We could get goals from a lot of places. Uh, in the middle. Who's this Phillips? We looked at this Phillips. Daniel Phillips, a fourth central midfielder on attack. Oh, he's the one that looked pretty basic, didn't he? He's going to turn out to be... He's got very good potential, which is good. Because even if he's basic now, we can train him into something else. I think a Metzala on attack would be good for him. Uh, but yeah, a lot of youngsters in here. Epicet? Not a defender. 
Gorman. Yeah, it's a Gorman and Bayo can be our swaps on there. We've got Tom Holland. He must be young. Yeah, midfield centre. We've got a good amount of DMs. I'm liking this team. Sam Ling has got great potential to make it as a fullback, which is good to see. And we've got some good youngsters as backup for Juanmi. Um, even better than that. So O'Sullivan. Yep, yeah, wing back on the left. So we can bring those up to the first team, have them play as the backs, uh, as backup. Um, we've got Marvin as a best defender. And then look at these guys, man. So many of the central midfielders. Kane, 16-year-old uh, central defender. Looks like he could be worth something. McGuinness and Dan Happ. Like, I am happy with this team. I am happy with this move. We've got youngsters with good potential. We've got a lot of players here. Even the goalies. Look at this. Palmer's up there. But then Reese Byrne. 17 year old can easily keep him in the back we've got someone to come through so we will sh look ah i think that's what we're going to go for we're going to pull from our our knowledge not from this save but from the west ham save i'm pretty sure this is the one i've saved yeah this sort of formation wing backs what we'll do is we'll switch these to inside forwards uh on attack for now to make sure we've got enough attacking threat that's what, that's the problem with this team this guy's likely to be an advanced forward. Um, Zala on attack would be nice. An AP and then a Regista. I don't think we'll get away with. I think we'll have to go for a ball winning midfielder and defend. Uh, wing backs we'll have on attack. We may go for full backs depending on how they play. But wing backs would be preferable. Then get all the way forward and put some crosses in. And you've got Metzala inside forwards and an advanced playmaker going for it. An AP in here may drop in maybe to a DLP. We may do something slightly more defensive. Um, but we can play positive. We've got short passing. It, this tactic worked perfectly. Obviously, a lot of it played on this being a register role. If we can get away with this being a uh, a deep a DLP on defend rather than a ball winning midfielder, that would make me happier. It's, it, there's a bit more passing there. DLP, AP, and Metzala on attack. But there's a lot of promise in this team. I am very happy with the team. I've probably gone on to talk too much about the team. I'm going to have to cut it out. Uh, let's have a look at the contract view. Let's just look what we got. Uh, where's our key, right, key players? Let's just look at the wages. Yeah, 1-9. Okay, so to, we could lose one-ish big player to get out. We'll pick the team. We'll see what's left. You've got like, Dean, Dean Brill. Backup player. He's on £1,000 a week. Sweeper keeper. He could go. Easily could go. That's a thousand pounds back. Then it's only another six hundred. We need Joel Byram is not looking great for the amount of money he's on. Neither is Elliot Durrell. Is he old as well? I don't recognise his name coming up. Winger support, thirty year old. So yeah, if we don't need him, I mean those two players going alone, they've got no, they've got no, they're, they're just backups. They, they're costing a lot of money for Charlie Cooper. I didn't see appear on any lists either. Defensive midfielder. We'll have a look at him. There's a few we can get rid of. I reckon. A few that aren't going to cut it, aren't going to cut the mustard, that are earning a, a little chunk of cheese that we can release. But I am going to have to go away and spend a lot of time looking at this. Uh, let's have a look at Hierarchy before I screw it. Colson's the only one team leader. Bond, Epikit, and Brill. Uh, he's the one I want to sell. He'll be fine. We can sell one. Um, but yes, overall, very happy. We are now Leighton Orient manager. We are up one league. We are in the Vanarama National League. And we have a challenge on our hands for the rest of the season. So let's have a look at the schedule. We need to come back for... We'll come back for... Oh shit, we're already in, we're in November. We're already in November. Look at this. Yeah, look. Lost 1-0. Lost 2-0. Lost 2-1. Draws, draws. Lost 2-1. We just need to get some goals in this team. Very rarely score more than one goal. We can get that going. Stockport, we've got, is the first game. Eighth. And then Billericay. Good old Billericay. We've played them a fair few times, haven't we? Cheltenham, Bromley. We're still in the FA Trophy first round. We're out of the FA Cup, but we can concentrate on the FA Trophy. We've got a big December. So, actually, do you know what? We will be back for the first game. We'll play Stockport and Billericay to see out November and December. And then uh, we'll be back later in December for a second game as we bring the FA Trophy and maybe the Halifax game. We'll get to know the league. It's exciting times. But I will leave it there. If you have enjoyed, smash the like button. Subscribe if you are new. And welcome to Leighton Orient and our second club on this London journeyman. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.